The beast known as the Grim Reapers, I like to call them, Lil Reese. 40% of all people mentioned by Lil Reese are actually now packs. They're dead. Did Lil Durk get choked out by Lil Reese? If you FaceTime with the shy rat Grim Reaper himself, it's basically like an interview for the afterlife. Lil Reese has caught a charge, or not really a charge, he was arrested on indirect contempt of court. Lil Reese has been let back out on the streets by the Chicago PD. Nobody is safe. Lil Reese, aka the Chirac Grim Reaper, is one of the most feared individuals in modern day hip hop. The 27 year old from Chicago, Illinois, started to gain national notoriety after he was featured on Chief Keef's I Don't Like back in 2012, which eventually peaked at number 10 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. This rapid success resulted in Lil Reese signing a major record deal with Def Jam. But as the years went on, Lil Reese started being known less for rapping and more for his various activities in the streets. This was mainly due to DJ Academics and his constant coverage of the Chicago drill hip-hop scene. Academics made multiple videos throughout the years on Lil Reese and portrayed Reese as one of the most dangerous rappers in Chicago. Academics was even the one who came up with Lil Reese's nickname, the Grim Reaper, since he claimed that Reese's Twitter page is more like an obituary because whenever Lil Reese would mention one of his ops in a tweet, they would somehow pass away soon after. But now, with all this worldwide attention on Lil Reese, the Chicago Police Department are watching him more than ever. Curious on what Lil Reese got caught up in over the years? Well then, we've got you covered. Here's an exclusive inside look at the criminal history of Lil Reese. Lil Reese has been living in Southside Chicago his whole life, and was apparently already affiliated with the BDs by the age of five. The BD set Reese claims as Lamron. For those of you who don't know, Lamron is normal spelled backwards, which is named after their main block, 64th and normal. Lamron later came together with another BD set in Inglewood called Taytown and formed 300. Almost every BD set in the Inglewood area of Chicago claims 300 such as Chief Keef from O Block and Fredo Santana from Front Street. Rest in peace. Lou Reese's involvement with the streets has unfortunately led to some run-ins with the law, with the earliest documented arrest happening in early 2010, when Lou Reese was just 17 years old. The details of this arrest are close to none since Reese was still a minor at the time. But we do know for sure that Lou Reese was arrested and charged for being involved in some type of burglary. It's unclear how much time he actually spent behind bars, but it was later revealed a few years later by various media outlets such as XXL that Lil Reese ended up pleading guilty to the burglary charges and was given two years of probation. During his time on probation, Reese seemed to stay out of legal trouble since there was no public document showing that he was arrested during his two years of probation. It was also during this time that Lil Reese started to take rap more seriously and ended up making several songs with Chief Keef, which resulted in both of them having a legendary impact on the Chicago drill hip-hop scene. After Lil Reese was off probation, he ended up signing a solid record deal with Def Jam, which made most fans think that Reese would take this money and move away from the streets of Chicago to a place such as LA so he could stay out of trouble and focus on music. But unfortunately, this wasn't the case, and Lil Reese continued to stay in Chicago. Lil Reese's second arrest took place in April 2013, just a few months after he signed his record deal with Def Jam. While police were patrolling the South Wells area of Chicago, an officer found a man sleeping in a parked vehicle on the side of the road. After taking a second glance at the sleeping man, the officer recognized that it wasn't just any man, it was Lil Reese. The Chirac Grim Reaper. The officer then began to run Lou Reese's name in the system and found that he had a warrant for his arrest in Champaign County, Illinois. This warrant for Reese stems from an incident that occurred back in February 2012, when Lou Reese allegedly attacked a female after she was trying to remove him and his 20 other friends from her apartment. One of the witnesses of this altercation filmed it and later posted it online in October of 2012, after Lil Reese was starting to make a name for himself in hip-hop. Once the video surfaced online, someone then made a police report about the situation, which led to the police putting a warrant out for Lil Reese's arrest. 
After the officer made this discovery, he then woke Lil Reese up from his nap and arrested him on three charges, criminal trespass, mob action, and battery. He was then transferred to the Champaign County Jail, where a judge held him on a $100,000 bond. Lil Reese ended up paying the bond and was released shortly after. I tried finding out the outcome of this case, but I couldn't find any information on it. I assumed that the charges were either dropped or Reese was required to do some type of community service. Remember, Reese was freshly signed to Def Jam at this time, so we had a good chunk of change to spend on lawyers. Lil Reese's third arrest occurred just two months later, when he was booked on a misdemeanor theft charge in June of 2013. According to DNAinfo.com, Reese was taken into custody after police became aware that he allegedly used false documentation to obtain a 2006 BMW 750LI back on April 13, 2013. Court documents claim that a 44-year-old man was the apparent victim in this situation and never gave consent or permission to register the vehicle in his name. It was unclear what kind of false documentation Lil Reese presented or how this even came to light. But it's worth noting that Reese was pulled over the same day he purchased the BMW 750 and was cited for driving without a license, not signaling, and for having no insurance. But it's unknown whether the two incidents were related. Lou Reese was held on a $5,000 bail and posted it just a few moments later. These charges against Reese were eventually dropped. Reese's next arrest happened less than a month after the BMW incident on July 13, 2013. On that day, police were patrolling the Eggleston Avenue area when they spotted Lil Reese and several other known gang members standing on the sidewalk. When Reese spotted the police, he immediately turned around and started walking in the opposite direction down an alley. Police continued to follow Lil Reese down the alley and claimed to have seen him remove a plastic bag from his pocket, which apparently had green plant material inside. The officers quickly stopped Reese after they saw that and proceeded to search him. During their search, they recovered $2,090 in cash, along with $24 worth of kush. Officers allegedly asked Lil Reese where he got the money from, and Reese responded with, It's mine. I got a little weed, so what? There's more serious crime out there. This ain't a big deal. I'm gangster. Reese was then arrested and charged with violating his bail bond, as well as possession of Kush. He was held on a $10,000 bail and posted it shortly after. It's unknown how this case played out. After that last arrest, Lou Reese continued to stay out of trouble for over a year. That was until July 27, 2014. While Reese was driving around Chicago in a Porsche, the Chicago Police Department decided to pull over Lil Reese. For what reason? Who knows? But anyways, as the officer was approaching the side of the vehicle, he claimed to have seen Lil Reese try to conceal a loaded weapon inside the car. The officer then immediately arrested Lil Reese on the spot and booked him on felony possession of a firearm. Reese was held on a $50,000 bail in the Cook County Jail which he of course posted two days later. After his release, Lil Reese took to Twitter and tweeted, Police Fufu, put a gun on me, but I'm out though. What y'all talking about? I ain't got my phone right now, but I'ma get up with y'all. Hashtag 300. Reese was thankfully acquitted of these charges back in 2015 during a bench trial. An interesting fact I discovered while researching this case is that in May of 2018, authorities arrested a man named Jonathan Smalley Smalley was a licensed firearm dealer from a city called Natchez in Mississippi, but grew up in the south side of Chicago. This man is apparently responsible for providing tons of firearms to the streets of Chicago, with one of his customers being Lil Reese. It was also revealed that not only did he give Lil Reese his weapons, but he was also the one who gave Michael Wade and or King Von the weapon that fatally shot Malcolm Stuckey back in 2014. Just thought I would mention that in this video since I know Lil Reese and King Von share similar fan bases. Lil Reese's sixth arrest occurred almost two years later on January 30th, 2016. The details of this arrest are almost non-existent, but what we do know is that Reese was arrested and booked on indirect criminal contempt charges. 
I myself, along with other journalists, are unclear of what this exactly means, but Reese was held on no bond. Academics at the time this occurred thought that this arrest had something to do with his previous arrest and maybe thought that Lil Reese didn't follow the rules the judge gave him in order to be released. Now this seems like a pretty good theory, but as I stated before, Lil Reese was acquitted of his previous charges back in 2015, so it couldn't be that. Anyways, Reese was eventually released a few days later. It's once again unknown how this case played out. Lil Reese's seventh and final arrest took place in May 2018, after the Chicago Police Department and FBI Task Force raided Reese's apartment in the South Loop of Chicago. It was unknown what Lil Reese did for the authorities to obtain a search warrant, but during the raid, agents recovered over $2,200 worth of kush, a digital scale, and a bundle of cash. Reports never stated how much money the Fed seized from Lil Reese, but he later revealed in an interview with DJ Academics that one of the FBI agents who raided his place was former NFL player Charles Tillman, who joined the FBI training program in 2016 after he retired from the NFL. Charles Tillman, according to Lil Reese, is the one who seized the money from him, which was reportedly $100,000. After the feds made this discovery, they arrested Reese and booked him on felony drug charges. A year later, it was revealed in court that prosecutors offered to lower the felony charge to a misdemeanor if Reese pleaded guilty and did one year of probation. Lou Reese would also have to pay a $584 fine. Reese obviously accepted this offer and pled guilty. Lou Reese hasn't been arrested since, and I hope it continues to stay that way. That's all I have for today. I'm out.